Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make an Axolotti box with all the buttons and pots. When you order an Axolotti synthesizer, you receive this. So what is it? It's just a circuit board. It's up to you to put it in a nice little box, wire a few things up and make an amazing synthesizer with it. The first thing to do is to design your synthesizer in your head. Think about what you want, where you need it. Design the workspace you're going to be using while playing this synthesizer. By knowing the limitations of inputs and outputs, you can find out more or less the amount of knobs you can have and how to put it out on your workspace. So the good idea is having a pencil and a piece of paper and start just by drawing out ideas. By studying the Axolity card, I've worked out that I can have 15 analog buttons and five digital buttons. So that could be buttons or LEDs. So this will be my amount of controls while I do the designing process. I want this synthesizer to look a bit like the MS-10 by Korg. So I'm going to go on a square design, so that way it can go on the side of my keyboard maybe. Not too big, and um, the card will probably be put at the back, the sound coming out, and then controls on the top. So I want um, something to select the waveform, and I want my filter with resonance and a high pass filter, and I'd want some kind of envelope probably, ADSR, then I'd want maybe a variation button for this oscillator, and then some modulation here probably. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 analog inputs. And I've got my five digital, so I'm going to put some buttons. Always useful to have a few on-off buttons. And I'll put some small LED. You can really design what you want. I have this in idea because it's the way the MS-10 is more or less. Mm, well, it's got an extra high-pass filter here. And I've got rid of the uh, tuning knob. I'll also be wanting to add jack inputs for these buttons, for example. So um, there'll be a jack input here, which I could plug in the pedal or plug in an output, whatever. But they'll duplicate these buttons, so we'll see this in the wiring, how, how to do this stuff, because it's quite easy. And I'll do the same thing probably for these four analog. So. These for these. So they're just analog female jack plugs. Like we have here, but these are for sound. Where you can plug in a stereo jack. And um, give it information, so it could be an expression pedal or something, or whatever. Once you more or less have your layout finished, you have to see size-wise, does everything fit? For example, here my drawing, well, too small, of course. So, very important, tape measure, measuring the cards, measuring all the small bits, so for example, here these this jack. I've got one here so you can see the size. And then you make it full size. So I've already done all this job because it's it's quite a long job. I've found 
what I think is the best for size wise, not too big, not too small, and everything should fit, hopefully. And I've more or less laid it down. So this is it. So you have the main cut off button. It's quite important to buy your parts before you finish designing because the part size will determine quite a few important things. If I had big buttons like this everywhere, it may be a bit small. And this will be my waveform selector. So for this, I'm going to need an eight position button. We'll show that in electronic wise, how that works too. And then these are the different buttons. These for the pots and these for the buttons. Then inside will come these things. Which are the jack connectors. Once your ideas are nicely drawn out, you can put them on a computer software like Inkscape and make sure that everything's nicely lined up and make a hole plan where you're going to be making each hole on the surface. You can also model it in 3D if you want to kind of see what it looks like. The important thing to have is a nice hole plan where you're going to put the centre of each hole you're going to be making on your surface. I've made it for the top surface and for the sides. This is my three button inputs. Now, once this is made, well, you can actually put it on the hardware itself. So I'm going to be using this piece of wood here. For the surface, you need something quite thin, but quite solid. I managed to find this, it's quite cheap, and it's easy to make holes into. Once your paper's lined up, you just get a point, a sharp point, and you mark the middle of each hole that needs to be made. Then you can mark the holes a bit better with a pencil. Once you've marked all the holes, the next thing to do is make the holes. And there's one big important thing is the size of each hole. Well, this size depends on what you're going to put in. For example, most of these, it's one of these. So I need to know this size. For example, this one here, it's one of these. Well, this is a much bigger hole. So as I'm not really sure of the size of each of these holes, I'm going to do a small test on the piece of wood I have lying around with most of my sizes, and then I'll see what goes in what. Here I found the right size for each of my components. My lead needs to be 5mm, my pots need to be 7 and my special pots 8 position selector is a 9mm hole. So now let's make these size holes on the right piece of wood. For these holes, I didn't have the right drill bit for wood and I used a metal drill bit and it's a disaster. Actually, these need to be quite big. 
and I don't have a white drill bit, so I'll probably be making them with a Stanley knife. So now my holes are made, I'm going to cut this and then paint the whole thing. So I want to paint this faceplate before assembling all the bits. So I want it to look a bit colourful, let's say, and it probably will make it more or less waterproof too. So I'm using this strange kind of paint. It will probably need loads of coats. So, well, I'm going to put one now and then, well, I'm not going to film the whole thing. This may last a bit of time. I'm going to let this dry and um, we'll come back and give it a few more coats. So while the paint is drying, I'm going to make the enclosure. So I'm using this old wine box. I need to measure out the right height and the right size, and then I'm going to try and assemble bits together to make a nice box. Um, don't take this too seriously. I'm doing what I can. If you want to really know how to do woodwork, don't follow my advice.
Okay, so my panel is now dry. I've got all my parts here. My knobs, my enclosure, the Exolotsy card, and all my pots and buttons. So the next job will be putting all these pots onto this panel and uh, then we can start soldering. So let's put aside the knobs and the enclosure and look at what we have to put into these holes. So each of these have a tiny little, um, I don't know how you'd call it, a tiny thing here that stops it from rotating when it's on the panel. And all of these, apart from the buttons, have these tiny things. So it's quite important to make tiny holes on the back of these panels so that when this is inside, So we need to drill tiny holes for these pieces to fix into the panel and stop turning when you turn the knob. So I've made these tiny holes so that these tiny bits fit inside. And now it's time just to put the screws on. Or bolts or whatever. Okay, so we've now screwed and fixed all these pots onto this board and we're going to start soldering. So we're not going to use this for the moment, do this afterwards. Do these uh, afterwards too. And let's just look at what we've got. All these are pots. This is a Nate position selector. So this will be a bit special. And these four pots are reproduced on the side. So these will be a bit special. They'll be going through some jacks. So we'll do these last and we'll do the buttons last. So um, we're going to start with this one. So this is an eight position selector. This one. It's got eight terminals here plus an extra terminal here. And what it does and what it does, it sends electricity from these to this when you select a position. So 
So what I'm going to do, this needs to be plugged into the Axolotl via an analog input. And I'm going to bridge resistors here. Daisy chain them so that I've got a bit like a pot, but with specific values. So I'm going to use 2.2k resistors and I'm going to solder them from here to here, 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 here to here. So seven resistors here. Um, my VCC, my current 3.3 volt will be going, going in here. This will be going to the earth and this will be going to my GPO. So, well, let's start soldering. So here I finished doing this 8 position selector with my 7 resistors here in daisy chain. I will still need to add the GPO here afterwards and the VCC, the plus 3.3 volt. I'm now going to do all the earth <coughs> wires on all of these. So now I've finished most of my earth wires, I still need to put the earth wires on the plugs, but I've um, left myself a wire for that. This is for the lead, and this probably goes to the board. And all these are attached, so it's like if there was one big rail, and it goes in the earth connection on each pot on my homemade multi-position pot and on each button. So now we've done the ground wires, we have to do the same thing with the VDD. Well, we'll see later it's VDDA, but for the reference voltage. So I'm going to come here, go there and daisy chain and do exactly the same thing. Opposite the earth wires.
finished wiring the VDD on the board. I still need to wire it to the pedal socket and then to the Axolotti board. A good thing to do now would be controlling that the conductivity is well working. So it's very useful to have some kind of conductivity meter. It's quite easy to make one. I'm going to just make sure I have electricity through, for example, my red. And I do. And on my black one, I do too. So I can now get on to doing all the GPOs on the pedals. So I'm now going to solder up the stereo jack plugs and get this installed attach it to these and then I'll be doing the GPOs. These three front plugs are bypasses for these three first buttons. So there's no VDD and there's just this earth and GPIO information. So I'll now do the GPIO. So these blue wires I've just put go to the switches. These will get disconnected when you put a jack into the plug. On the opposite side is where it goes to the GPO on the board. So I'll do these in yellow and I'll do them now. That's the main wiring done for these first three switches. These could be mono. I've used stereo because that's what I had. They could be mono, but I, I'm, I'm using stereo. Now I'm going to do these four stereos. So these have to be stereo because they replace these parts. This will be done the same way, except this time we're going to have a VDD. And the VDD, I'm going to go and get it and put a resistance on each one. So now for the VDDAs of these plugs, I'm going to go through a 220K resistor.
So I've now finished the stereo jacks. I've got the blue labels that will go to the pots, the yellow that goes to the awards, the Axolotl card, and an earth to go to the earth. And this orange red to go to VCCA. So now I need to put these inside, make sure all the wires are connected. I'll probably screw them on. And then we can start wiring all the GPIOs from all these pots straight onto the Axolotl card. So here you can see the wiring on these stereo jacks. Here's the VDDA input. Comes from VDDA plus a resistor. Here is my, inf my GPIO straight to the Axolotl card. And here is my earth. So if nothing's in here, there's the contact goes through there and it comes out the other side. So I've just got the blue GPIO because my pot is already wired in VDDA and an earth. If I plug something in, it will be the plug that responds to this and the blue wire gets cut or open. And nothing goes through. So now I'm going to wire up the lead. The lead needs a resistor, a 220K resistor on the positive pole, so on the long leg. So I'm going to solder these. I'm now going to wire all these yellow cables, the main VCCA and the earths, to the Axolotl card. So this has to be done with a bit more concentration and this is where it's important that when you made your whole sheet, when you did the design, you made sure of each name for each input or output. For example, for these four analog in or outs here, it's these four at the bottom. It's PA2, PA3, PA4, PA5. I put PA4 and PA5 because they're also analog outs. So at any time I can just sacrifice these two pots and use an analog out signal which can go into another axolotl or something. 
the same for these buttons, PB6, PB7, PB8, PB9. These go here and the PC5 which can only be digital. These are digital only so it's um, important that it's not using a PC3 which can also be, for example, analog. So I need to follow this plan for each yellow cable that comes out of each of these pots so that it goes into the right input of my Axolotl card. Here, for each input, there is a name. PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4, PC5. So let's start soldering the card directly now. So I've now finished wiring up all the GPIO signals, the Earth and the VDDA onto the Axolotl card. I've soldered them, finished cutting a few of these off, make it a bit tidy, as tidy as possible for me. I'm now going to find a way of screwing this card onto the board. So there will be a back panel here afterwards. And this comes like this. So then I'll just have to solder these blue ones and it will be finished. So the way of attaching this onto the board... Oh no, I need to do one more thing, just before. This alimentation, I'm going to double it. I'm going to add an extra one, which I will put on the back panel here. So I first need to wire this up. So I'm going to do center pin positive. For attaching this onto the board, I'm going to lift it up a bit using some rubber foaming that I had lying around. It was a toy, I think, for kids and it's uh, just the right nice thickness. So I'm going to make these kind of small feet. And then I'm going to screw in these holes. So make sure you don't put big screws into these holes because sometimes there's some electronic happening somewhere inside or whatever. So make sure they're not ruining the board. Plus the depth of one of these and then it goes into the wood just a bit.
So my wiring is now complete. All these plugs are wired up to this and this, the blues to this and the yellows to this. This being the activity card and the blues to the controls they are bypassing when used. And same for the buttons. Normally, I would probably put some hot glue on these so that they don't come and touch something that they're not supposed to touch and make contact. I'll probably hot glue this on here too in the corner and then I'll have to just make the back panel and then screw this all on. But before I'm going to take it for a test on my um, computer and uh, see if everything's working see if anything is working then I'll just finish the build afterwards so after testing it I realized that I had wired all these pots back to front that means normally you put the positive on one side and the negative on the other and I've put the positive on the wrong sides. This one I got white and all these I got wrong. So I'm going to just change the colour. That means for all these, not my buttons or my lead or this. The red will be the negative and the black will be the positive. So. Don't get this wrong, it's stupid. And, well, I'm going to have to deal with it. So I've now finished all the wiring, tested it, made sure everything works, everything works very well. I'm now going to put some hot glue on a few things that I want to fix, like on the lead, on these resistors, and on this um, power cable here. And then I'll have to make the back plate and then I'll screw this on last. So I'm going to start by um, doing this lead here.
So after some more testing, I realized that these three input jacks here, which are these three buttons, don't work as they're supposed to. So I unscrewed it and I realized that my wires here, the yellow wires and the blue wires, are on the wrong pin. They're on the middle pin and I should have them on the tip because these are mono jacks and mono jacks is earth and tip. So I'm going to desolder these and the blue ones and put them on the tip. <laughs> 